and welcome to the NBSU Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. The kid is not my son. Okay. Um, also joining us is Sapphire. I grew up with daddy issues. <laughs> Silver, why don't you love me? Because I am definitely not related to you. But I'm still filthy! I'm sorry, you got filthy? Oh my. Well, whatever you do. Uncle Sylvie, no. Uncle Sylvie, oh, okay. Oh, okay, oh, thank God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, with that really strange intro out of the way, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic, issue 40, published date on March 16, 2016, written by Ted Anderson and art by Brenda Hickey. In this issue... Princess Celestia has given Twilight Sparkle responsibilities, and those responsibilities are to take care of Spike and Hijik you. This is a hard one, like, ish. Well, it depends on how you view it. Mm, true that. Twilight becomes a baby mama. Does that make Celestia the baby daddy? Oh god. But anyway, before you guys, uh, before you guys say anything more, first impressions are in order. Uh, Silver, my friend, what do you think, man? Well, this is basically uh, how I met my assistant. Yep. It's enjoyable if you accept Celestia is a one-note teacher. Throw Twilight into the fire and see if she'll emerge unscathed or maybe just slightly singed. I get people when they say that, oh, this is a poor representation of uh, parents who are, st- who are in school, teenage uh, mothers or... Or parents who dropped out of college for a family and are now going back into college while still being parents. So, but honestly, Twilight is just so young, I don't view it that way. I don't view it because she, Spike is not her son's son. I just find it another of Celestia's tests. I was actually a little disappointed by that element, but more on that later. Mostly it's about how Spike is the first character to really kick Twilight out of her comfort zone. And challenge her. And in that regard, in terms of celebrating their relationship, it can actually be a very fun and enjoyable comic. You've just got to work through some uh, uncomfortable moments first. And Sapphire. Comic was uncomfortable. I was sadly one of those viewers who viewed it as a um, teenage mom type of thing, even though she's not really a teenager in this comic. I can only imagine how much of a pain it must have been to... Well, not that Spike's a pain, but you get what I mean. It must have been certainly a hassle to have to face the difficulties of raising a baby dragon that no one knows about and also have to deal with school, especially when you're supposed to be Princess Celestia's protege and have all this great talent. I can see Twilight's pain. I don't like to see Twilight's pain, but I know she somehow came out stronger in the end, which is nice. Although I do think we got to see Twilight at her worst, but we'll get to that, like, at the end of the, uh, comic. But yeah, those are my first impressions. I liked it, although it was a bit rough to get through. And as for me, whoosh, this comic. It's interesting. The art looks good. The comedic timings there, but the message, oi, the message a hard one because like you mentioned silver, you could look at it in terms of, um, parenthood, like, um, early parenthood, um, what you mentioned before, um, parents who are, who were not ready and have to bear this responsibility, um, that's one way to look at it. The other way is to think about it this way. Spike is a pet. And Twilight needs to take care of it. And yeesh, looking at it that way, that's not fun. And what does it say about Spike? If you put that aside and take the comic as it is, it's a pretty entertaining one. If you have not read this comic yet, I suggest that you read it first before listening to this. And if you have read it, welcome in and we can start now. Spoilers are ahead. So... We start off the comic with Rainbow Dash flying into the castle looking for Twilight, um, wanting to borrow a new Daring Do book. And she's not in the Hall of Friendship and decides to look for Twilight. And 
she spots her in her private chambers, reading or reminiscing at old pictures of cute little Spike. Or a cute little Twilight. Ah, oh, yes. Reminiscing the good old days, like how she was, she was so, had, how she had so much potential and whatnot. Ah, those were the days. Those were the days. Memories. In the corner of my mind. And page five. I like this art. Oh yeah, definitely with the, um, Twilight photo. Brenda Hickey really did a great job on this one. Using the mean as a frame, that's really good. Although that's gotta be a nightmare to brush. Oh like, yeah. Oh, that, that frame is so tangled. You ate flowers everywhere. Oh, it's just, it's just awful. But also, a uh, little Twilight with her smarty pants doll directly beneath it. Yeah, that's so cute. It's adorable. Is this the first time Brenda Hickey drew adorable Twilight? Yep. Maybe. Also, Trixie's mom. Hi, Trixie's mom. Mm. A sunflower. Yeah, I think this is the first time we get to see Trixie's mom. They're saying that Trixie at least attended the school for gifted unicorns. Or dropped out because of how scared she was. I don't know. No, she was there. She was there. Trixie attending. I'm not 100% sure if she did. It's one of those situations where the comic writers just really embellish on certain things. So we move on to, well, Twilight being there, really excited. And Princess Celestia wanting to meet Twilight in private, saying that she has an extra test for her. Can I just comment on Celestia's face where she says, Twilight Sparkle, how wonderful to see you. That is the face of evil. Oh, this works. That is the face of wickedness. Nah, it isn't. The next panel is. They both, they're both kind of scary. It's like, oh, I've been waiting for this. You're mine now. If there next- was no iris and it was just like a dot to indicate the eyes, then I'd be scared. Great horse. Mommy mouse. And the task that Twilight is given is Twilight needs to take care of a baby dragon. And said baby dragon is Spike. And I like the scene here. Freak out Twilight. (laughs) Very, very nice. Very cool. I like this picture here. I like Celestia's face. It's adorably um, innocent. It's kind of like Rose Quartz from Steven Universe as she is blissfully unaware of everybody else's turmoil. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's another review for another show. We get to see that Princess Celestia is just explaining to Twilight about how the hardship of um the baby dragon, like it's the same baby dragon that Twilight hatched. Um, she's been taking care of him ever since, and she thought that yeah, I I should push the responsibility to Twilight now. Twilight can take care of the baby dragon, right? That this will be extra credit. Yeah, this will be good. Uh, and she has fate in her. Yay, okay, bye-bye. Oh, and this is great. I'll help, I'll help you learn to care for a baby dragon. Oh, sorry, our library doesn't have any baby dragon books. <laughs> uh, and dragon pony relationship hasn't been going since when now? <laughs> uh, no wonder she was very excited to learn about dragon. Never. Never again. She's like, please tell me how to, Deal with baby dragons, cause I can't do this anymore! Yeah, but still, this is a huge responsibility to put on someone, no matter if it's a baby or a pet. <laughs> Taking care of another life is just hard. Really, really hard. And the quote Rainbow Dash says here is priceless. So if Princess Celestia asks you to race Spike? Sounds like a big job. Twilight's getting wrinkles just thinking back on it. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was, oh, it was. And Twilight goes through explaining that um, I've learned as much as I could about taking care of babies, but it was difficult, especially at first. And yeah, there's no tips on taking care of baby dragons. If I do remember it, there's nothing on the record saying how to take care of dragons and dragon stings, right? Yep, the librarian flat out says no one's, no pony's ever written a book on dragons, on raising dragons. Yep, and, and this is just difficult for Twilight. And we do get a cameo from the teacher again. Yay! Who was the teacher's name again? Inkwell. Yeah, it's been a while. I like that teacher. Or at least she, I like the uh, Celestia micro comic. She's a stern teacher in this comic, but she's also nice and, and emotionally supportive. She recognizes that Twilight is struggling. 
to prove that she's struggling, Spike acts up, cries in class, and, well, Twilight doesn't have the time to, well, study and take care. Like, she is really tired. Like any parent, I can tell you that I face a few challenges with babies, especially living with one. And while recording, I had to stop in mid-sentence just to not get those crying babies into the recording. So yeah, I've been there. <laughs> we get a little mini cameo from Moon Dancer, whose face is very stretched out. Like, that's like the weirdest face ever. Uh, what? Yeah, it's for comedic effect. Don't Don't take anything to heart. She's just can't believe her rival is sleeping through class. No, this is so ex- this is not fair. <laughs> we get Twilight confessing her frustrations to the one being she trusts the list in an inanimate doll. <laughs> Mr. Smarty Bands. Well, it it speaks to something about uh the idea of imaginary friends. They have no wants or needs of their own. They live solely for our joy and benefit. You know when people say they can only feel like they can be themselves in a fantasy world? Uh, I've, I've seen people post on boards about this. I think, well, no, that's the world where everyone can cater to you. It's a lot harder to recognize we're in a world where people have their own needs and wants. And so part of growing up is, re- is expanding your sphere of awareness to include other people. Yeah, true. But I think in this current situation that Twilight is in now is that she needs a place to vent. I think venting to an inanimate object is at least okay. It doesn't give feedback. As long as Twilight feels better at the end, that's okay. But poor Spike. Spike, that that face there, that looks really sad. He's got his own needs and I think he recognizes on some level Twilight is the big caregiver. Because we sure as heck don't see Celestia stepping up. We did hear that she did do most of the care till now. But still, Twilight has always been part of Spike's life since he can remember. And yeah, next page we get to see a very dead Twilight with her soul leaving her body. (laughs) Uh, It's like, no, no, I don't want to die yet. (laughs) Yeah. And like Silver mentioned, Inkwell was a very... Um, understanding and supportive teacher. Although maybe Hikaru, Umi, and Fu could uh, help out in that one panel. Oh. Oh. Who, who, and who? I know this is probably some anime reference I'm not getting. C'est true. The, in the panel where Twilight is sighing heavily in the middle of the class seats, there are three ponies. I an see orange, them. a blue, and a green. They are bought, modeled after the three main characters of Magic Knight Ray Earth. Ah, I remember them now. Never heard of it. Uh, never mind. It's a very classic anime. I'm too busy focused on friggin' Trixie, like, seeing their snickering like the little brat oh, the, she is. Oh, the youth of today. The youth of today. Yeah, but still, Inkwell pulls Twilight over and tells her that she has a lot of talent and potential, but... Uh, she's not living up to it. I'm not 100% sure if she understands that she needs to take care of her baby dragon. And it seems that Spike is, well, trying to be understanding right about now. Like, she has feelings. So. Well, Spike is, he's not fully aware of his actions yet. He is a baby. True that. In the next page, we get to see the Royal High Tea. This was mentioned in the Celestia Micro, where said event was to gather all the teachers and students and parents in one place and talk about academics and you know, the progression of said students. We get to see that Twilight's dad has a knack for picture taking and whatnot, and Spike is a very naughty dragon. We also see it's kind of, it's up in the corner of the first panel, but Inkwell and I believe her name is Ginger Snap. They seem to be having a disagreement. Wasn't that, like, featured in the uh, micro-comic, too? Like, didn't the uh, one pony want her out the uh, board? Well, that was that was a different pony, uh, one of the rich. Ginger Snap represented the, the middle stage of a, of a life. Things have settled a little more. You're a little more bored with what used to be brand new and surprising. And she had a little bit of a snarky attitude. And well, Spike being a baby, 
jumps out and tries to have fun. Twilight scolds him for it and yeah, we get to see Twilight Velvet. She's talking to the princess for the first time and she's really having a blast of a time and what's Twilight's dad's name again? I forgot. Nightlight. Yeah, Nightlight is having a blast taking pictures. Like, nobody's getting pictures with the princess. I'm getting pictures with the princess. And then, this is where I worry about Celestia. She's assuming that Twilight has made lots of friends and apparently this is the first she's realized that Twilight is having a little trouble. And so thankfully she does realize that, oh, would you like to come to the parents' room? I apparently need to start paying attention to the pupil I tasked with raising a baby dragon. So let's see, it's just not coming out of this very well. Yeah, but in all honesty, uh, this could be a coolness factor for, in Celestia's mind, like, yo, friends, look, I have a baby dragon. What up? It could be that. So, uh, but it's Twilight, so she's not going to use that to her advantage. But still, that's very bad. You don't do that. I'm just wondering, why would Celestia charge Twilight for taking care of the baby dragon? Like, she's too young for this. Ah, that's the, at the end, that's at the end. So anyway, at the parents' room, we get to see Twilight and her parents talking to Celestia about how much she excelled in school and whatnot. And talk about all the good stuff. Like, um, well, let's see. Um... House class, learning about what, and yeah, they're good, and being specific. <laughs> uh, and apparently, one of the professors is a Pokemon. Oh? Sorry, random thought, it's like, Professor Abra, it's like, Pokemon! <laughs> oh, you. While Twilight talks about Professor Abra, Spike slips away and causes trouble. At this point, Twilight breaks down and just says that she can't she can't deal she she really can't and yeah at the same time spike just crashes everything and has a lot of fun again i i just want to point out celestia's just look at like oh what have i started I look upon your work celestia revel in your clever plan to drive a pony into early breakdown <laughs> honestly i'm not surprised that this happens because of celestia's track record um, was kind of blinded by her own hubris by not really paying attention to her little sister and said little sister became um, Nightmare Moon. Did not really pay attention to Sunset Shimmer who went against her word and flee to the parallel universe of Equestria Girls. And, well, <laughs> we got Twilight now. And... It's lucky for her that she didn't went insane at a very young age and fought her own plan to get her sister back. So, yay. <laughs> All I know for certain is that uh, Celeste... I'd always hoped that Celestia would teach Twilight one-on-one -on -one and in her own way prepare her to fly solo against things like Nightmare Moon. This comic seems to imply that Celestia has only had one method of teaching, which is basically... Learn to swim by throwing them in the in the pool. <laughs> That's how my dad teach me how to swim. And I don't enjoy this element. It really makes Celestia look like a bad teacher. But analyzing a site, we have to go... I beg your pardon. Well, that's for the end, because if we analyze now, we won't be finishing. And we're clearly near the end. Anywho. Okay, fine. Basically, Twilight's storming home, yeah? Yes. Twilight is releasing a rage on Spike and it's hard for her with all the stress that she's going through and Spike is not making it easy on her and uh and Twilight wishes that Spike just be like smarty pants. Uh. Hopefully Spike doesn't have to remember all of this because this seems a bit of verbal abuse. Especially, like, it's your fault that you made me look like a bad caretaker, a bad student, and a bad daughter, and can't behave. It's verbally abusing, so hopefully he never has to remember that. Oh, no, he'll he'll move on to physical abuse later in life. <laughs> uh, still, I don't know how or what, but Spike just says, Ikshmupang, like, He's just trying to say, I'm like smarty pants. 
or smarty pants. And yeah, at, at this point, Twilight just realized that you're not a doll, you're not a nuisance. I thought Princess Celestia was trying to give me a responsibility, but she was trying to give me a friend, wasn't she? She was trying to break you. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, this is the point where uh, it changes Twilight's uh, pers- perspective. Um, um, sorry. It changes Twilight's outlook on life and made Spike here, or the dragon, her friend, even give uh, him a name. And the name is Spike. Now, firstly, I've just had a revelation. Celestia really did need to break Twilight because she knew at some point so I would have to go against Sombra's dark magic, mm. which is meant to emotionally break you into despair. Well, <laughs> you can't break that which has already been broken. Uh-huh. Twilight's mind has been stretched and tormented like Taffy. It's been broken and remolded so many times. I don't think anyone can truly bend her will for Celestia got there first. Oh, yeah. And at this point, um, parents comes in because they're worried. Um, Doctor storms off like they they want to know what happened. And Velvet asks, um, "Are you all right, dear? You ran out of the tea party." And yeah, with this, Twilight Sparkle cheers up and has an important announcement. And that is, she wants to introduce them to Spike, the baby dragon, her charge. And after introductions to Spike, uh, everybody awes because it's a very cute moment. And apparently all of them are there just reminiscing at how cute it was and how uh, that was the best story. And we get to see Spike there, uh, curtain walking up from his nap. Yep, and Twilight offers him... I just offering Coco sugar-induced help someone sleep. That seems counterintuitive. I don't know. Personally, for me, when I drink cocoa, I feel a bit sleepy. Really? You give me chocolate and I'm bouncing with energy. <laughs> oh, God, he turned into Daffy. He is Daffy! You're despicable, he said to Princess Celestia. <laughs> and with that, we get a splash screen of a very cute picture of Twilight and Spike hugging. It's very cute. You have to see it for yourself. And with that, the comic ends. Final thoughts are in order. Seppi, what do you think? I like this comic. Even I agree that Celestia kind of needs to, um, you know, actually help in this comic, considering what poor Twilight had to go through. And Silver? It, it's different depending on whom you focus upon. For Twilight, it's a growing experience that her best friend is a, is a doll who has no will of its own. That's her comfort zone. It's where everyone's there just to sort of make things happy for her. Spike is her first friend. He's the first being to push her outside her comfort zone and make her realize there's more life than just her needs. And in that way, it's true in the show as well. Spike has always pushed Twilight to get out of her comfort zone, uh, to recognize things she might not want to acknowledge. It is kind of fun to see how that friendship started, and he was doing this for her before he was even really cognizant of his own abilities or what he was doing. We get a little bit of interaction with Twilight and her parents, and Inkwell in particular shines out as a teacher. The only character who I feel suffers in this is Princess Celestia, who not only puts this burden on Twilight, but then seems oblivious about it until she checks in with Twilight later. Now, I get she is the princess of the land, and she has duties and responsibilities. But the fact is, she put this task on Twilight there is a responsibility there to ch- at least check in, offer coaching or counseling, or make time for Twilight. For her prize student who she's going to demand so much of in the coming years, it's disheartening to see Celestia not making a- an investment in time. And as for me, I have to agree with what you said there, man, because when you break it down, when you look at it, there's multiple ways to interpret said comics, because um, Seppi said it's kind of... a uh, young parent kind of deal and I personally said it could be interpreted as a child having a pet or taking care of a pet but if you put that aside and go through the comic yes it's about how Spike changes or pushes Twilight into being more open to things and pushing her to a place where 
she's not that comfortable with, but still opening up to new things. And you mentioned earlier before about looking at how Twilight was thinking about um, Smarty Pants and whatnot, you were saying earlier before? Yeah, uh, how Smarty Pants is the ultimate friend because that friend has no will of its own. Yeah, and there's also a fact too because when we see at the very beginning, Smarty Pants has always been there for Twilight. As we all remember in the show, um, Smarty Pants has always been one of Twilight's most prized possessions. One of those kind of dolls that you have since childhood. And in the comic, it sets as a catalyst for Twilight to vent out her emotions. And near the end, we get to see that what Twilight thinks Spike should be is like Smarty Pants. Spike's just there to be kind of there to listen and cater to her instead of her catering to what others need. And at the end, where she finally realized that she was wrong and Spike is not that, she's kind of a friend. That's the moment where this relationship between Spike and Twilight blossom. Well, that's my thought on this comic. Overall, I would say it's an interesting read. The art by Brenda Hake is pretty awesome. And writing from Ted Anderson is per usual. So let's see, I better not open a dig here. That's all I can say. Yeah, uh, now you reminded me of something. Honestly, one of the few things that I don't like to insert in our reviews is me comparing it to fan fiction. But even fan fiction writers know not to do this. There's so many holes. Are you saying this is a holier-than-thou comic? Nah, I'm just saying there's so many... Here's the Metallica. <laughs> nah, there's so many plot holes to... Oh, God, no. There's so many holes in the story because why would Celestia give this responsibility onto Twilight? There's there's no logical reason besides, like, could it? No, oh, God. <sighs> but anyway... <laughs> oh, dear, Muchacho, you're, you're, you're breaking up on me. Yeah. He's going to pieces. Uh, how am I sounding now? I meant emotionally. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, there you go. Quick, Safi, get the, get the emotional super glue. Ah, but I just got the Metallica. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, next week's review. Silver, got any idea? Well, let's see. I believe we're coming up on Flutter Brother. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, I can already hear the sounds of despair. <laughs> uh, Beneath the sounds of silence. So next week's episode will be Flutter Brother. Brother? Brother? How do you say that word? Brother? Brother. Brother. Uh, B-R-D-D-E-R. Brother. All right. Yeah. So, Flutter Brother. Um, season 6, episode 11, overall episode 128, and written by Dave Rapp. So, yeah, that will be next week's review. Hope that will be an interesting one to talk about. Oish. I know, it's going to be fun. Fun, 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 fun. Anyway, that's next week's review. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecile Vaquil. And I am mourning over the upcoming episode. Uh, it won't be that bad. Anyway. It will. We'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Adios. Bye. <laughs> uh, what was the list of thinking? Seriously. A fair question for which I have no answer.